Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a commentary. Now, I don't usually do commentaries, but to but I'm just going to use some I'm just going to do something different for my videos. I'm going to be commentating on Ben the Looney. So get ready for this video to appear, which is just wrong, because it's, you know, this just contains major ear rape, most of the time. Welcome back to Ben Rants, and when I was a kid, filmmakers didn't try to turn movies into commercials, most of the time. Welcome back to Looney Tunes Month. Since I have a schedule to stick with, and I can't do the same video two weeks in a row, so it's time for me to do a rant. I thought to myself, how am I going to find some Looney Tunes related to rant on? I then thought of the Looney Tunes show, but I'm not going through that nightmare again. But then, I had to think back to my childhood. There is one Looney Tunes related thing that used to be one of my favorite movies as a kid. This was a movie that Warner Brothers shoved into our faces as a Looney Tunes movie, and me being the huge Looney Tunes fan that I was back then, I ate it all up. Watching it again as an adult, I can now see this piece of crap for what it really is, an embarrassment to Looney Tunes. Okay, first of all, this movie is an embarrassment is an embarrassment to Looney Tunes. I have the VHS. I watched the whole freaking movie. How in the world is it terrible? I mean, yeah, you can get bored of it sometimes because the jokes can get extremely old. And you can get bored to death by it. So that's just what happens when you watch it too much, very often. That thing is Space Jam. What? 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 Oh my gosh, Space Jam? Uh, uh, let me just move on. Uh. I've been wanting to rant on this piece of spit for the longest time, but I was shaky to do so. Now, for the sake of Looney Tunes Month, I finally gathered up the courage to do it. So, get ready to want to pop every basketball you see. Here is my rant on Space Jam. First of all, what the heck is up with the title? Space Jam? Who the heck thought of that? It's like they couldn't think of a name, so they threw words into a hat and drew two of those words and put them together. Seriously, Space Jam? That sounds like a galactic rap battle. That's not a galactic rap battle, and they didn't throw words into a hat and drew two of them together. It's because they're in outer space. In half of the movie. So deal with it. That's why they called Space Jam. Even the theme song says that. At the beginning of the movie. So anyway, moving on. This movie hasn't even started yet, and I'm already ranting on something about it. Uh, stop that. Anyway, the it's next big right. thing to note is the poster. Bugs Bunny gets top billing over Michael Jordan. That's right, a cartoon character gets top billing over one of the best basketball players of all time. Don't truck with cartoon characters. And okay, first of all, Bugs Bunny isn't the king of cartoons. They put Michael Jordan on the top because he got top billing because he he's throughout he's in throughout the whole movie. He's Bugs Bunny isn't in much of it. Anyway, the movie starts out and we see Ivan Reitman produce this. That's right, the director of Ghostbusters is producing a movie where Bugs Bunny teams up with Michael Jordan. I don't know what he was on either, folks, but he is Canadian, and there is a certain thing that's legal in Canada. So, this movie starts off with little Michael Jordan suiting hoops in his backyard. Um, this is a Looney Tunes movie, right? 
Yes, it's half Looney Tunes. You can't just jump the gun and go straight to the Looney Tunes. That's that's just stupid. You have to start with the main character. Michael Jordan. He's the main character in this movie. The the Looney Tunes. Okay, okay, okay. So so then uh I don't know what to say, so let's just move on. Soon, the credits start, and we see a montage of highlights of Michael Jordan's career, still waiting for the Looney Tunes to appear. During the credits, I noticed something weird. This movie has four writers. Huh? What? Huh? What? Keep that in mind throughout this video, folks. I'll bring it up later. After more boring Michael Jordan filler, we go out to outer space where this alien boss runs an amusement park called Moron Mountain, and he notices that aliens are starting to hate his park. Um, did we just step into another movie? This has got to be the most random transition I've ever seen in any movie. Okay, another thing. Mr. Swackhammer is the villain. We have to meet the villain next. There's always a villain in cartoons or movies. Or cartoon movies. Or real life. So that so that's why we had we had to go to go up to outer space and do that. They had to do that for some reason. Anyway, the alien boss is named Mr. Swackhammer, and he's voiced by Danny DeVito. I'm glad to say he redeemed himself a year later by being in Hercules. Anyway, Mr. Swackhammer wants something new and fresh to bring to his park, so he settles on the Looney Tunes! Really? If that's how they're going to bring in the Looney Tunes, then we're not in good shape. So, he sends his alien henchmen, Orange One, Green One, Purple One, Blue One, and Pink One to Earth to capture the tunes. We enter another movie again as Michael Jordan is playing baseball now. Wow, I can't forget Michael Jordan played baseball, so I'm glad this movie is kind enough to remind me of that. Even though I kept forgetting it for a reason. Anyway, our next character to appear is... Hello, Newman. Sheesh, who did he lose a bet with to have to be in this movie? Okay, I agree with him. How can... Newman be in this movie. This is just weird. He's supposed to be in Seinfeld, not well whatever. Don't take that Seinfeld curse lightly, people. Anyway, Newman's brought into you know, it's really not made clear in this film, so you can mad lib it. Newman is brought in to verb Michael Jordan. Help? Yeah, right. Like he could save Michael Jordan from his baseball career. Teach? This is the same guy who went all out in a game of risk with his best friend Kramer. Torture. There we go. That's perfect. Anyway, while Michael Jordan is sucking at baseball and Newman is sadly not being funny, the alien ship buries itself underground to look for the Looney Tunes. Hey, guys, you might want to look in Hollywood. I don't think the tunes live at the center of the earth. What do you know? They do. Huh. What? Do they share an acre of hell with Satan? Anyway, ten minutes in, we finally see Elmer Fudd chasing Bugs Bunny, whose voice is off. That's only because Mel Blank died. Just because. That's because. Mel Blank died for years. That's why his voice was off, you dummy. The aliens then land their ship on Elmer's head. I'm crying inside. That was a great slapstick joke, but it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny! Okay, what? A joke? That wasn't a joke. How the alien ship hit Elmer Fudd in the head. That wasn't a joke. It, it's just hurting somebody. It's not funny. 
Anyway, the Bland aliens are looking for bugs, which is weird because if they're able to watch Looney Tunes in outer space, then how the heck do they not know who he is? Anyway, Bugs tricks them and they pull out ray guns out on him and ask him to gather up all his tune pals. Before we can see more unfunny cartoon gags, we cut back to unfunny Michael Jordan and Newman. After Newman drops Michael Jordan off at his house, MJ is attacked by his dog in a very unfunny way, and we're introduced to MJ's family. His fictional family. Look, if one of my family members was famous and was going to be in a movie where they play basketball with the Looney Tunes, I wouldn't want to be in it either. Anyway, MJ walks in on his kids watching a sports report on MJ's crappy baseball skills. Is it sad to say that this is the funniest part of the movie? No, scratch that. This is the only funny part in the movie. MJ gets tired of taking other people's opinions, so he changes the channel to a Roadrunner cartoon. Thank God! Actual Looney Tooney goodness. Before I can end on MJ's crappy baseball skills, is it sad to say that this is the funniest part of the movie? No, scratch that. This is the only funny part in the movie. No, there's not a lot of funny parts in the movie. Not. A lot. MJ gets tired of taking other people's opinions, so he changes the channel to a Roadrunner cartoon. Thank God! Actual Looney Tooney goodness. Before I can enjoy actual humor, Porky Pig runs in and tells Wiley and Roadrunner that the Toons have an emergency meeting. And the cartoon just stops. So, according to Space Jam, the Looney Tunes actually film the same cartoon over and over again. They don't do repeats. It's lie. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard! Okay, stop it. That is loud. It hurts people's ears because of you. How the heck is the network going to fill in the rest of that time slot? Well... The Looney Tunes have an emergency cartoon meeting, so I'm going to have to fill this spot. I wasn't prepared because I had no idea cartoon characters don't believe in reruns, so I'll just ad lib. Um, the weather is good, if it's good where you live. Um, paper spelled backwards is rebar. And I wasn't born a man. I think I've said too much. Anyway, the Tunes have their emergency meeting where the aliens threaten them. Of course, they then pull out their ray guns, and now they're afraid of them. Oh no, ray guns! It's not like they can kill us because we're cartoon characters, but still, they're ray guns! Bugs then fools them into giving the Toons a chance to defend themselves. These aliens are easier to fool than Jessica Simpson. Jessica Simpson from Simpsons? Uh, okay... Never mind. So, the Toons plan something to retaliate against the aliens. Oh, the possibilities. They could blow them up with dynamite, whack them over the heads with mallets, and put them in cages with Burmese tigers, and watch as the tigers rip them to alien shreds. Or they could just challenge them to a basketball game. Again, this is a Looney Tunes movie, right? Yes! Stop repeating yourself. Anyway, the aliens are at least smart enough to know that the Looney Tunes would beat them in a basketball game, so they head to New York during a game between the Suns and the Knicks, dressed up as the main character in a Jethro Tull song, and they sit next to Dan Castellaneta and Patricia Heaton. I guess they... Maybe they... They could have... I got nothing. These are the most random cameos ever, and this is coming from someone who likes the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. Anyway, the aliens steal the talent of two then-popular NBA players, Patrick Ewing and Charles Barkley. Looks like they also stole their comedic talent. What little they had. We cut back to the Looney Tunes still not being funny, as aliens want to turn to practice on the Looney Tunes' conveniently placed basketball court. I don't know why they would have one either, folks. However, it's the Blaine aliens' turn to practice. After the Toons mock them, the aliens pull out their ball full of talent and it turns them into monsters. Or, as the movie calls them, monsters. Ha ha ha, that's stupid. Yeah, that is stupid. 
Anyway, Bugs realizes that now they're the ones that are going to get their hindies kicked, so they realize they need help. Darn. If only they made those aliens run away with cartoony gags when they had the chance. Anyway, we cut back to MJ as he's playing golf with two other pointless cameos, Bill Murray and NBA Hall of Famer Larry Bird. It's like Warner Brothers knew this movie was going to make money, so they shoved as much money into cameos as possible. Anyway, this starts a running gag throughout the movie where Bill Murray wants to be an NBA player. Bill, just stick to catching ghosts and getting rid of gophers. You'll be more successful doing the... Anyway, MJ gets a hole-in-one thanks to Bugs, and he is sucked down into the Looney Tunes land. Michael Jordan doesn't at all seem shocked by the fact that he's surrounded by cartoon characters, and Bug tells him that they need his help. You see, MJ, we need your help to stop aliens from kidnapping us by kidnapping you. Hypocritical, ain't we? Okay, you have a weird accent of Bugs Bunny and all the other characters. The tunes then show Michael Jordan their gem. I don't know why they would need one either, folks. Because they need one for the game! Jeez. Suddenly, our non-threatening villains burst in and use Michael Jordan as a basketball. Well, you can pretty much guess what happens here. Since MJ is a human being, him being turned into a basketball will crush all of his bones and smash all of his organs into anatomy pie. No doubt killing him. Dun 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 That's not how the movie is going to end. It's 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 a kid's movie. How could how would they make make a movie that's gross? Only adults movies. If Warner Brothers didn't want us to suffer more, yes, that would happen. However, he somehow survives, and I still have to watch my childhood icons getting crapped on. We then step into another movie as the NBA players that lost their talent ha are having bad lives because of it. Oh, basketball's the only thing we're good at, and now we suck at it. Our lives are ruined. Anyway, while all this other unfunny stuff is going on, Stan is digging for MJ. One wonders how he's not getting arrested for destruction of property, but whatever. We cut back to another movie as the Looney Tunes are trying to play basketball, but are stuck doing what they should have been doing for the rest of this movie, performing slapstick on one another, when suddenly, who walks in but... Oh, Mama! Sweet Sister Christian! This is quite possibly the most unattractive thing to ever walk on a film. Some people are actually turned on by her. Don't worry, I'm not... I'm not turned on by her. Go ahead and judge you. She's also the most blank character to be in this movie, and she's being compared to the skittled colored aliens and Michael Jordan himself. She's only got one character trait. She doesn't like being called Doll. That's it. I'll give this movie credit, though. I'd rather her be bland than her rape my ears with her motor mouth. Anyway, Bugs falls head over Rabbit's feet for Lola as she becomes a part of the team. MJ then realizes he can't play in nice clothes, so he asks Bugs and Daffy to go up to 3D land to get his basketball gear. What follows is nothing more than Miss Comedic Gold. Bugs and Daffy get pursued by MJ's dog, and not once is there a funny gag. How could that happen? Anyway, Jordan's fictional kids come and save the day, and Bugs tells MJ's kids that they kidnapped his dad to help them win a basketball game against aliens, and they shouldn't tell anyone. And the kids say, yeah, that's okay. Um, kid, you didn't realize you're talking to cartoon character! Okay, that's really loud. Stop it. Please. You're getting annoying. And another thing, if MJ's going to be doing this, I can only imagine how this would play out if the conversation got brought up. Kids, where is your father at? I haven't seen him in two days. Uh, we're not supposed to tell you, Mommy. Tell me where your father is, or I won't let you watch that channel where they're showing that background of that Roadrunner cartoon they've been showing for two days. Okay, 
Day was kidnapped by the Looney Tunes, and now he has to play a basketball game with them against space aliens. What the heck? Do, 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 do. Hello, Mental Asylum? My son's gone crazy. Send a van right over. Also, have you guys seen my husband? Anyway, the Tunes bring Michael Jordan his gear, and he puts on a montage of him dunking while the Looney Tunes watch him in amazement. Wow, he's doing something that he's been doing for half of his life. Amazing. Not amazing. Newman joins the team, and now it's time for the big game. Hubie and Birdie do play-by-play -play on the game, and after Michael Jordan is introduced, Swag Camera asks the stupidest question I've ever heard. Is he a Looney Tune? What? Ow. Is he a Looney Tune? Well, gee, he's not animated anyway, and he is in 3D. He looks like a Looney Tune to me! What a maroon! That's only because they don't know who he is. They don't know who Michael Jordan is. They don't know who Bugs Bunny is. They don't know who Porky Pig is. They don't know who Twitty is. They don't know who any of them are. After that stupid question, MJ makes a stupid statement after the Toon Squad. Seriously, that's their team name. Huddle up. MJ says, let's just have fun. Um, MJ, the Toons' lives and way of living are on the line here. If they lose, they become slaves. That sounds like too much pressure on their backs to be able to just have fun. Anyway, the game starts, and of course, the Toons are getting their animated heinies kicked. If only they challenge the Monstars at something they're actually good at. Anyway, halftime comes a little too quickly, and the Toons drink Michael Jordan's secret stuff that magically makes them able to kick the monsters, Heinies. After a bunch of slapstick that should be funny, Swag Camera decides that he wants MJ for his amusement park. He says MJ will be a star attraction. How? No aliens know who he is! He says MJ will sign autographs all day long. What auto- Okay, stop it! I'm gonna have to start turning down my volume because I don't, because I don't want to hear your loud, freaking voice. Graphs. What alien would want Earthlings autograph? My gosh! No wonder why his amusement park is in the shape it's in. Because this guy has no idea what his own people are interested in. Anyway, the tunes magically are now getting their heinies kicked again. During this, Bugs and Lola get smitten with each other, and I could care less. Once one of the Toons players is taken out, Newman is then called on to the court. Of course, he gets pancaked. Yay! No more unfunny comedy relief. Of course, although we were all waiting for Newman to get hurt, one wonders how he survived being trampled by five giant monsters. Well, Daffy is there to explain it. In his own words, No sweat. This is Looney Tune land. Okay. So what you're saying is, that despite being humans, since MJ and Newman are in your land, they can't get killed. Then how come when you two were in the real world, Debbie didn't get killed when he got mauled by MJ's dog? That's freaking bullcrap! Being in a certain place doesn't make you adapt to it like that. That would be like if I went to Alaska and grew fur. It just doesn't work like that. Anyway, the Toons have 10 seconds left on the clock and they need another player. Who else comes in but... That's right, the director didn't get his money's worth out of Bill Murray's cameo, so he brought him in to save the team. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't know Dan Aykroyd was in this picture! Because... Well, I got nothing. I'm not even sure how I got into Looney Tune land. They look similar to me. If they don't to you, then get your eyes checked, people. Anyway, the game starts again as more than 10 seconds goes by, and MJ makes the final dunk and the Toons win. Hooray! The Monstars send their boss to the moon because they now realize they're bigger than him, and they put the talent of the NBA players back in the ball. And NJ realizes he has a baseball game to go to. So, he leaves the pale stereotypes of the Looney Tunes and we cut to a baseball arena where the crowd is getting restless. 
They paid to see MJ suck at baseball, and they're going to get their money's worth come hail or high water. Yeah, they're not going to get their money's worth just to see Michael Jordan suck at baseball skills. Eventually, MJ shows up in a spaceship, and the crowd goes wild. Yeah! Hey, Fred, how come Michael Jordan's coming out of a spaceship? Shut up and cheer for him! After MJ plays a baseball game that thankfully we didn't have to sit through, he goes to his basketball friends and they get their talent back. Hooray! Anyway, MJ decides that he really does suck at baseball, so he goes back to the Chicago Bulls and the movie ends with a picture of Michael Jordan dunking. You know, if I was a casual viewer and all I saw of this movie was the beginning and the ending of this movie, I would think this is a documentary on Michael Jordan. And I have a good reason to think that! So, there's the plot of Space Jam. The plot is stupid, the Looney Tunes personalities are raped, and Michael Jordan and his friends are terrible actors. And, and this movie is the worst combo of two things since... ever! Not ever. It was great. It was pretty great. Just pretty great. I'm saying pretty great because it's just... Well... <sighs> Never mind. Again. You know the basic plot. Now to go over general problems. For starters, the director of this film, Joe Pinka, is a commercial director. Pretty coincidental, seeing as how this movie's nothing more than a commercial for Michael Jordan's life. Second, the way they make Michael Jordan and the Looney Tunes meet in this movie is so lazy and dumb. The aliens want to kidnap the Tunes for their theme park. Only problem is, how the heck would aliens know who the Tunes are? I mean, I'm surprised they know who the Tunes are. Since when do aliens get Earth TV channels? I. Okay, you're not making any sense. Either he know who they are, or or they don't know who they are. That's how much. That's how much he's not making sense. Of. Just don't get it. Third, this movie overdoes close-ups. It seems every character in this movie has a moment where their face is making out with the camera. You know what sucks most about this, though? Throughout an 80-minute movie with over 10 close-ups, not one. I repeat, not one fourth wall joke about the close-ups is made. Come on! That would have been the closest joke related to Looney Tunes in this movie. I especially love knowing that Disney's Aladdin made a close-up joke in its first five minutes four years before Space Jam came out. I love it when Disney does Warner Brothers better than when Warner Brothers does Warner Brothers! Fourth, remember the four writers of this movie? Yes, I'm bringing them up again. All I can say is, what the flack, writers? What the flack? You had four writers working for this movie, and not one spoke up and said, Um, don't you think the idea of this movie is stupid? Wait a minute. I think I know why four writers got credit for this movie. They didn't make this movie together. They made four separate movies. No, think about it. One writer came up with a Michael Jordan movie, another one came up with a Looney Tunes movie, the third came up with an Alien Invasion movie, and the fourth came up with a Bill Murray movie. However, Warner Brothers said no to all of these scripts and shoved them in a vault. However, when Warner Brothers wanted to make a movie-long commercial, they got out the four scripts and combined them together, and Space Jam was created. It's a possibility. Bottom line, Space Jam is a piece of crap movie that I can't believe I used to worship as a kid. The very idea of combining cartoon characters with athletes just seems idiotic. And I hate how movies keep trying to turn athletes into actors. Stick to what you're good at! I'm just glad even though this movie was a box office success, they didn't try to do something like this again. I just hope that Disney's upcoming Mickey Mouse movie isn't about him helping Serena Williams with her anger management while more people are trying to eat Minnie Mouse's soul. If it is, I'm blowing my brains out. I'm Ben, and I'm signing out. I'm gonna go burn my Space Jam's bed sheets. Okay, now why the heck would he do that? Burn the Space Jam bed sheets. That just shows how stupid he is. 
Does he know that he has to realize that he has to pay for those bed sheets? Okay. Never mind. See you guys. JS501 is out.